Hey, hey everyone, welcome to another in a series of Facebook field trips coming at you from Utah's Hogle Zoo. I'm your host, Brad, in the marketing department. I've got my colleague, Jeff, on the social media team <laughs> here at the zoo. He'll be handling everything on the Instagram side. Hello to all of our Instagram followers, but uh, I'm all about Facebook. So uh, thanks for joining us. Sure, appreciate you tuning in every day. I hope you're enjoying these uh, field trips. We sure enjoy bringing them to you. And we got a really cool one for you today. As you can see, I'm outdoors in the lovely sunshine of Northern Utah. I think spring is right around the corner if it hasn't hit already. Very exciting to see all the leaves come on the trees and such. Uh, I'm gonna turn this around, give you a better idea where we're at. We're here at Meerkat Manor. Now Meerkat Manor just opened last year in fact it hasn't even even been open a year yet and it's our new home for our amazing meerkats we've got a special guest here with us gwen in animal care hey, there she is hey before we get started you see the donation button there any support you could provide us would be so appreciated as many of you know we are closed and revenue is uh as well it's kind of stopped so any donations that you can you can uh, send our way. There's also other ways you can support your zoo at hogelzoo.org. There's all kinds of fun animal art that you can purchase. We have an online store up now and more fun things coming here soon that we'll talk about. I see some comments rolling in. Excited to see meerkats today, many are saying. Thank you, Michelle. So uh, Gwen is over there. Again, we're practicing really good physical distancing here at the zoo. And so I'm just gonna ask Gwen, Gwen, what are we gonna see today? What you got planned? It's okay. You know, these animals, they have a mind of their own. So we'll, we'll get them out here. Hey, I appreciate you guys jumping in. Uh, Meerkat Manor is located on the west end of African Savannah. We are actually on the train side of the exhibit where you really can't go unless you're on the train. And it really brings a nice perspective. Well, and look at okay. all the fun things that she's got planned for them here too. They got the food in the bowls there. We got the ball pit, which made a pretty big uh, splash on our Facebook a while ago. Yes, indeed. Ball pit up for them. I remember that. If they haven't seen the termite mound, they just love that. The perch on top looks beautiful. Oh, and it's it's such a beautiful day. A absolutely. Amy, she does have a mic. Let us know if you can't hear Gwen, folks, once you see her. Thank you for your donations. Three people have donated. Oh, thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you. We love your kids because they're watching. We love your kids anyway. Thank you for watching. Can I hear, can I hear Gwen on the mic there? Finch. Star. Star. Yeah, they can't hear. Go ahead. Her name is Stumpy because she has a really short. Go ahead and hit the power on your mic here real quick, Gwen, and then uh, hold it down for a second. Yeah, it might have. Hi, Layla. Thanks for tuning in. We're working on Gwen's audio. Oh, thank you for your donations, everybody. Thank you so much. Can everybody hear me now? Is that better? Find out in a second. It's a bit of a delay okay. in the video. But... Yeah, let me know if you can hear me, guys. Look how cute they are. Sorry. You guys hear me? Dee Dee just said they lost me. Oh, no. Can they hear me at all? How's that, gang? Anybody, uh, can you hear Gwen now? 
people hearing me can't can't hear Gwen. Now let's let's let it scroll. It, it, there's a bit of a delay. So who's the one that just ran off with the big chunk of food there? That was Star. <laughs> that was Star. Yes. We're going to take Stumpy's food away until she uh, makes an appearance. That way she has a chance to... Stumpy, can you go out? Okay. <laughs> Kathy says they can hear us. Thank you. Ugh. Okay. Technology, folks. Hi, Tiffany. Thank you for tuning in. You're such a great supporter. Thank you, Christina. I feel much better now. So tell us a little about where they came from, Gwen. Okay, so Finch we have had, he's right over there. Finch right there. Yeah, oh, and then ran off again. he came to us from Disney. Oh, um, really? From the Animal Kingdom. Yeah, Disney's Animal Kingdom. Not from like It's a Small World, but from the Animal Kingdom. Okay. Yeah, from the Animal Kingdom. That is a good ride, though. <laughs> um, so our meerkats are all part of the species survival plan, which I know is something we talked a lot about, but it is a really important program. Um, it's something implemented by the APA for the survival of threatened and endangered species. So we got these two girls in the back from the picture, and they are five years old, and they just got eight. Oh. Oh, she made a little bit of an appearance. Let's see if I can. She's getting her out. Yeah, come on. Come on, Jerry. Oh, she pops up. She comes back and we'll see. So, she's missing half of her tail. Oh, there she is. Look at her little head. There she is. She's adorable. Having a hard time hearing Gwen. Some say they can hear you, others say they can't. Oh, yeah. see, now Shelly says they can't hear anything. Oh, okay. Let's just go ahead and unplug it for now, then. Uh, if you want, the I can just, I can come in and stand kind okay. of over here, if that's better. Let's go ahead and unplug it from the bottom. Yeah, they go. Yep. Now everyone should be able to hear when we're close. How's that, folks? We'll speak a little louder, also. Yeah, I can talk louder. Is this okay? Oh, that's, that's great. Okay. well and get used to me being out here. I do a lot of trust building and training with them, so I think they'll do pretty well. Meerkats do live in extensive groups of about 20 plus meerkats, and uh, they dig burrows under the ground, helps them stay safe from any predators, um, from that heat of the African savanna, and um, they have extensive rooms also, and they do have a room designated as the bathroom. They Ooh. are latrine animals, so they pick a spot, and that is where they all go. Wow. Yeah, so, so they all it's kind a of nice, have easy like cleanup for me. I'll have, have like a collective agreement yeah, that this yeah. is the spot. It does make it easier for you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so they're just kind of over there, actually, Sun, and let me see if I can get them a little closer. Here you go. Come on. Here you do a good job. And are those mealworms that you're tossing? Uh huh. There you go. Oh, Delicious. oh, thank you. Yeah, see, folks, One your standard mealworms. Who doesn't love a good mealworm? Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for your donations. <laughs> it means so much. And with meerkats, it is a matriarchal system, so females are in charge. Oh. <laughs> oh. They're really great with communicating. Female with power. Their family. Uh, females will take turns taking care of the babies, also known as kits or pups. Um, so it's 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 a really cool system, yeah. And like I said, they are part of the SSP, so we do hope that 
These girls will breed with Finch, our male. Hoping for some little babies here. Oh, here comes Dumpy. Aww, Good job, so man. She is she really so quite shy, isn't okay. she? Oh, I yeah. See, she just <laughs> went into the mound. Yeah. There she is. You guys yeah. see her? Good job. Her tail's a bit shorter. I saw her for a second. Yes, uh... yeah. So her tail, she does just have that shorter tail. That's how she got the name Stumpy. And we just thought it was cute, so we didn't so want to cute. change it. And then we got Miss Star. Clara's asking, how often do you feed them, Gwen? Um, I feed them three times a day. Three times a so day. So in the morning, they get some vegetables and fruit. They get a little bit of ground meat. And they get this little tiny pellet. I can show it to you here on a piece of meat. Um, it's called insectivore, and that just has a lot of extra nutrients and minerals for them, just to ensure they get that well-balanced diet. Gotcha. Yeah. And there's three total, yes. right, that we have? Uh-huh. Yep, three total at Meerkat Manor, two up at the SAB. Um, and then they're afternoon, so for lunchtime, they'll get some worms. And then for their dinner, they get some crickets. Now, they look pretty fast. How fast can they run? Do you know? About 19 miles an hour. Gabe is asking that. that Gabe, look, 19 miles an hour. No, that'd be, no, it's 19 miles. 19, yeah, <laughs> that sounds about right. That's oh, I have it here. You guys might recognize these meerkats from the Lion King movie. You remember Timon? He was a meerkat, is a meerkat. And do we know how old they are? Yeah, so Finch is eight. He just turned eight in December. And the two sisters just turned five in March. Now, someone just asked what this ball pit is for. Oh, it's for enrichment. So yeah, sure let's talk enrichment. There. Yeah, it's to bring out some of that like natural digging behavior. I also put a pile of bark over there for that. Oh, um, right. And hid some stuff in there. So they'll probably dig through that a little bit later. Uh, yeah, just some fun fun enrichment for them today. And how long do they live? They uh, live Rachel asks. Uh, 12 plus years under human care. Usually half that in the wild. And animals live a lot longer under human care because they always have a reliable source of food. There's no predators, and then they receive veterinary care. We do have our on-site veterinary staff. Great. Hey, welcome, Jameson. Thanks for tuning in for the first time. <laughs> yeah, you picked a good one to tune in. I outright, Gwen? Yes. <laughs> no, I call that straight up standing. I just call that meerkatting. Meerkatting, yeah. Because that, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a people, pretty popular pose for them, isn't it? It is. A lot of people train their dogs to do it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they call it the, do the meerkat. <laughs> Maybe it could be the next dance crew. It truly is the one thing that's so unique about these animals is how they stand. And, and this mound here, they even get to the very tip top here sometimes, yes, folks. They do. So what meerkats do in the wild, and our meerkats do this as well, is one meerkat usually acts as the sentry. Um, and they are, that just means they are the lookout. So they will stand on a termite mound even in the wild, maybe on some stumps if they can find it, kind of get up there, get that get that great vision across the savanna, and they're just making sure if uh, checking for any type of danger, any predators that are coming, and they will alert the entire group. These guys have a lot of different vocalizations, just like we have different words and everything, so they're able to really communicate well with one another. Now, these guys are so darn cute. Pammy is asking if they could be pets. No, they do not make good they pets. They do not make these good pets. These guys dig like crazy. Um, I can't even touch them. They won't let me pet them. I, and I do a lot of training and trust building with them. Um, if I try to touch them, I would definitely lose a finger. And sadly, oh. a lot of animals are going extinct, becoming threatened, all due to the illegal wildlife trade. And it's terrible how the animals are shipped over. Um, definitely stick with what you know. Zoos get calls on daily ba on a daily basis about people getting exotic animals as pets and they just they really don't make good pets. They're just not I mean, good I pets. I have a bachelor's degree in order to care for these animals. Yeah. So that's just how expensive. And and you still care. might lose a finger even with your all your training. <laughs> <laughs> it could happen, let's hope not. <laughs> Try to be very careful. Yeah, there are plenty of other wonderful animals you yeah. can adopt. Cats yeah. and dogs. Go to your local shelter and yeah. uh 
and, and they really need a good home. But yeah. meerkats, they are not, they do not make good pets. No. Hey, happy birthday. Somebody just had a, their 12th birthday oh, today. Birthday. And it's Jacob. Hey, a shout out to Jacob. Happy, happy 12th birthday, birthday. Thank you for tuning in. Now, um, Jennifer asked, do they make any noise, a, a sound, um, verbalize? They do. They kind of make this vocalize. Little, like, barking sound. Uh, they're not doing it right now because they feel safe. A barking I sound. I think, I think you know the rules, Gwen. <laughs> I did this we, last time. <laughs> we have to try We have to try to do your best meerkat impression. Okay. <laughs> so, it's, it's usually like, rawr, rawr, rawr. That was really good. <laughs> I've heard what they sound like before, and to me, I heard them, they sounded like little little raccoons too, right? <laughs> Sometimes with their with their noises that they make. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> oh, you're getting a lot of hearts for that one, Gwen. A lot of, uh, thanks, lot of thumbs guys. up for your impression you're there. Too much. <laughs> what is a group of meerkats called? It's called a mob. A mob of meerkats. Mob of meerkats. There you go. Surely, you there you go. And, and fill in the holes that they dig too. It seems Every like they dig day. a lot, really. So you go and you rake it, you fill it in, and yep. clean it up. They're diggers. Every day. Do you ever bury the worms in the ground too? For the yeah, sure. Yep. Oh, I got a there. Yeah, yeah, I will bury them. Yeah, so yeah, hopefully for some babies, they can usually have around two to four uh, pups. And they're actually really great at just taking care of them themselves. So if they have the babies, I'll just check in the one time and um, I'll look for any signs of stress, anything like that. But if there aren't any, I just let, I'll let them, uh, let them do it. They're it's just natural instinct. They're really good at it. And how many do they have at one time? How big is a, a litter? Is it called a litter? What's it called when you have a group of yeah, like, sure. meerkat babies? Yeah, sure. We'll call it a litter. <laughs> how many can they have um, at they one time? They can have about two to four. Two to Actually, four. one to four. Yeah, one to four. Oh. And they're born hairless, they're born blind, eyes don't usually open up until 12 to 4 weeks, and they'll emerge from the burrow usually around 3 weeks. There you go. Good job, guys. That's Stumpy. Oh, I'm proud of you, Stumpy. <laughs> Good job, Miss. Want some more? There you go. Well, they love those uh, mealworms. Yes, they do. Yeah, they're loving it out here. A lot of time when guests come visit, they'll be laying on their back, all legs sprawled out, and we'll get calls that guests think maybe one has passed away. <laughs> they're not, they're just sunning themselves. <laughs> just enjoying the sunshine. Yeah, see, he's, Finch right there is nice and relaxed. Look at him. He seems like the veteran too. He is, yep. Yep, he's lived here a lot longer than these two. Nice. Any other questions? Uh, someone just asked that they were here and they saw the meerkats rolling in the dirt. Do they like to do that? Oh, yeah, they'll do little dust baths. They'll roll around. Maybe if they got an itch, anything like that. Oh, look at Finch. He just really sprawled out on that bark over there. It looks like he's kind of maybe be in the lookout or he's going to pass out on the job. I don't know. Working hard or hardly working. What to do? Enjoying those wood chips, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, also here at Meerkat Manor, we have some other animals that, yes. that live here. Do you want to talk about those? Yeah, maybe we sure. can go take a look at them really quick. Yeah, not a problem. We have two African Cape porcupines. Their names are Kessie and Kawano. They are brother and sister. And uh, we recently acquired them. Uh, they just turned a year old, also in March, and uh, we're hoping to soon be able to introduce them to the meerkats. Oh, wow. um, but I need to do some, I've been doing some trust building and training with them, um, and so I just want to make sure that is all accomplished before I introduce sure. them, just to make sure everyone's safe and comfortable. So they'll be in um, the same exhibit? Yeah. Oh. Wow. Yep, hopefully. Very yeah. right, cool. Hopefully they'll all get to share all of the outdoor and all of the indoor access. You see those wood chips flying as they're digging. Yeah, they're That's having a great. good time. Yeah, why don't you go, uh, see if you can check out the porcupine. Yeah, I'll, I'll follow. First. Oh, you want me to go first? Okay. okay. Oh yeah, that's right. All righty, here we go. Okay. Keeping my six foot bubble. Yeah, so 
so you can kind of see folks right there in their little hiding place. That's Kessie. He's, they're both a little shy. A little shy. Yeah. So that's why I'm doing that trust building and training to let them know that I'm safe. It's okay. Now you divide your time between here and SAB, yes. right? Yes. Is it pretty equal, uh, the time you spend here versus SAB, or are there more animals in SAB you need to care for? I have more animals to care for at SAB, so I'd say I'd probably spend 20 to 30 minutes here every day. And that includes training and trust building. Yeah, well thank you so much, Gwen, for your time today. Yeah, folks, we're closed, but many of you I know are anxious to return to the zoo. Some of you may have never visited the zoo, and if you haven't been to the zoo within the past year, you have not seen Meerkat Manor. It is a wonderful exhibit. It's dedicated to Jim Hogle, our board chair emeritus, and uh, I can't wait for you to check out our Meerkats here at Meerkat Manor. Guaranteed you will like what you see. So thanks for tuning in. We sure appreciate all your support all the great donations. We're here every day at 1130. Hope you will be as well. Remember, always be a champion for wildlife, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.